insert an intravenous catheter, you'll first need some equipment. Typically, this requires an intravenous solution, intravenous tubing, turnkey, disposable gloves, an intravenous catheter, gauze, an alcohol swab, an occlusive dressing, and tape. Remove the intravenous tubing from its package and close the roller clamp. Remove the cap on the IV tubing spike. Remove the cap on the IV access port of the intravenous solution. Insert the tubing spike into the access port with a twisting motion. Squeeze and fill the drip chamber until the fluid fills approximately half of the chamber. Suspend the intravenous bag and tubing from an IV pole. Open the roller clamp and flush the IV fluid to the end of the tubing. Close the roller clamp. You'll now need to select an appropriate size intravenous catheter. 20 gauge catheter is a common size used to establish IV access for most operative procedures. An 18 gauge or larger catheter may be used if large or rapid fluid administration is required. Consider using local anesthesia prior to inserting an 18 gauge, 16 or 14 gauge catheter. Notice that the needle is approximately two millimeters longer than the catheter. This is an important point to understand why it is necessary to advance the needle and catheter a few more millimeters after the needle enters the vein and before removing the needle. The risk of a needle stick injury has been reduced using advanced needle technology. There are many intravenous catheters available with this technology. The BD system uses an activation button to retract the needle into a plastic safety chamber. The activation button is depressed after the catheter has been advanced into the vein and before the needle is removed from the catheter. BD uses InstaFlash technology for 20, 22, and 24 gauge catheters to provide immediate confirmation that the needle has entered the vascular lumen. Blood will appear between the needle and catheter before it returns to fill the flash chamber. New developments in intravenous technology have dramatically decreased the risk of blood spillage during IV insertion. BD catheters with this blood control technology have the designation BC. These catheters incorporate a septum, preventing back bleeding when the needle is removed and prior to connecting it to the intravenous tubing. The vein is penetrated and blood return is observed along the catheter shaft and continuing to the flash chamber. The catheter is then advanced and the button is pushed, retracting the needle into the barrel where the needle is fully encapsulated. As the needle retracts, the blood control septum closes to stop blood from flowing out of the catheter hub. When a lure connection is made, the septum is permanently opened, allowing flow into and out of the catheter. Remove the needle cover in a straight outward motion. Holding the catheter hub, rotate the barrel 360 degrees to loosen the seal. Make sure the push tab is facing upwards and the catheter is seated back in the notch. Stabilize the vessel and perform the venipuncture. Look for initial blood return along the catheter in 20 through 24 gauge catheters, then in the flash chamber behind the white button. In 18 gauge and larger, blood return will be only in the flash chamber. Once you see blood return, lower the catheter angle and advance the entire catheter and needle unit slightly. This ensures the catheter tip and not just the needle tip is within the lumen of the vessel. While stabilizing the vessel, push the catheter off the needle and into the vessel. Avoid pulling back on the needle. Release the tourniquet. While stabilizing the catheter hub, push the white button to retract the needle. It is not necessary to occlude the vessel. Blood flow will be restricted one time until a secure lure connection is made. Connect any accessory devices and flush or begin the infusion. Stabilize the catheter and apply a sterile dressing according to your policy.
Select an appropriate site to insert the catheter. The basilic, cephalic, and median antecubital veins are usually easily accessed in the antecubital fossa. Catheters in the antecubital fossa may occlude if the patient bends their elbow, making it a less desirable site for long-term access. The cephalic, basilic, and median vein of the forearm are very superficial and can be accessed in the forearm. Intravenous access in the forearm gives the patient the greatest degree of freedom of movement after surgery and is an ideal location for prolonged IV access. Superficial veins on the dorsum of the hand are also readily accessed and commonly used for short-term venous access. After applying a tourniquet, gently tap the vein to promote venous dilation and select an appropriate entry site. Avoid slapping the vein as this can be both uncomfortable for the patient and anxiety provoking. Cleanse the site with an alcohol swab and avoid touching the insertion site once it has been cleaned. Apply distal traction on the skin to immobilize the vein. Puncture the skin overlying the vein at about a 20 degree angle. Immediately decrease the angle of insertion and advance the needle and catheter. Avoid applying a downward pressure, which can result in the vein collapsing. Pressure should be gently applied in the direction of the needle. Try to visualize where the tip of the needle is in relationship to the vein and make small adjustments to enter the lumen. Once the lumen is entered, advance the needle and catheter another couple of millimeters to ensure the catheter is in the lumen. Immobilize the needle and advance the catheter into the lumen. Depress the activation button to retract the needle into the safety chamber. Release the tourniquet, connect the IV tubing, and adjust the roller clamp to control the IV flow rate. Apply a sterile dressing and secure the tubing. Establishing venous access in the forearm is preferred over the antecubital fossa if venous access is required for more than 24 hours. The forearm veins are very superficial. A slight 15 degree angulation of the intravenous catheter can be created using the plastic catheter housing barrel. This can be a useful trick to prevent the needle tip from going too deep and passing through the back wall of the vein. Angulation of the needle tip is an optional trick that can be used for forearm venous access. It is essential to immobilize the vein with the other hand applying distal traction on the skin. The needle tip enters the skin directly over the vein. It is important to avoid applying a downward compressive force as this may collapse the vein. Once the catheter is advanced into the lumen, the catheter is secured as previously described. Note that this BD catheter does not have the blood control technology. Without the blood control septum, proximal vein compression must be applied prior to retracting the needle to prevent blood spillage. Once the intravenous catheter is secured, dispose of the needle in an appropriately designated sharps container and clean up any mess you've made.